Follow American Hostage on Amazon Music to binge all eight episodes right now. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Listener discretion is advised. Episode 4, The Profiler. When a guy's neck is on the line was a common euphemism used around newsrooms, a casual way of saying someone's in a bind. But when that guy's neck has a dead man's line strapped around it, with a sawed-off shotgun aimed square at the back of his head, believe me, there's nothing casual about it. Especially when you're the only thing standing between his life and the man with the trigger. Look, I'm sorry I couldn't make it tonight, Barb. I can take the couch. I don't want you on the couch, because I don't want to spend a week hearing about your back. What if what if I didn't pick up the phone, huh? What, what if it wasn't me? Fred, I, I already apologized, Barb. Don't Barb me. I don't know what else I can do. Why is it that every time we talk nowadays it's because you're apologizing? Barbara, you've clearly got something you needed to say, so you should say I, it. I don't want this to be a fight. What do you want me to tell you? That I'm happy about it? That I engineered it? That I deliberately went back to the station to go after a story? Did I say something? Maybe I did. But it wasn't because I wanted to ditch my beautiful wife or spoil another anniversary. It is because I am lost. I I don't know what you've been saying to that man, but I am sure that you are the reason Dick Hall is still alive. But when you called from the office today, I, I didn't even get to have the kind of reaction any normal person would have to the news you gave me. I knew that it was you and that you wouldn't be coming back. And I feel guilty. I feel guilty. That when you said you were saving a man's life, that moment was numbed for me. You deserve a better husband, Barb. How? Give me some time to answer how, and I promise to answer it. Okay, Fred. Okay, Barb. Good night. Good night. I love you, honey. Caritzis was like a cosmic event. He was his own planetary system, and the rest of us, the media, were just moons orbiting around him, idly floating by. Why did I disrupt the system? Why did I exit the Indy 500 speedway and veer off the track? I was bored. I was hungry. I was reckless. I was all those things. Simple as that. Fred? Cliff, how's a copy? You're allowed to wipe your feet before you start work. Okay, I can multitask. What's new? We did some digging. Uh, found an old police report that Kritzis once threatened his own sister with an axe. Is that right? A few years ago. Well, that gives you a vote of confidence. Anything else? Feds are coming in. Morning, Sally. The, the feds? Yeah, I think Jim's got them on the phone right now. Jim's in his office already? He slept here. You're kidding. No, I guess broadcasting a potential homicide is giving him the jitters. Of morale. Gary came in an hour early. Christ. Right. No, no, no you can, uh, you can bet. Uh, no, no, we're not gonna. Fred, you wipe that fucking smug look off your fucking face. We're, uh, we're putting the ball in your court. Whatever Agent Peterson says goes. All right. Yes, sir. I'll call you back when he gets here. All right. Thank you, sir. How'd you sleep? like an imprint of my wedding ring between your eyes. The feds are coming in. Now what else? Well, I talked to Chief Gallagher about an hour ago. He said Tony has been up all night ranting and raving nonstop. Hell, if he doesn't come out of this with a hole in his head, he'll be the new mascot for Duracell. Well, he's going to be irritable. Yeah, wonder what that'll look like. Oh, oh, you know what a profiler is, Fred? Like a reporter? No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about the field of criminal psychology. Uh, then no, I don't. 
Me neither, but we're getting one. Special Agent Roy Peterson will be here any minute. He's going to gobbledygook his way into our hearts, and we're going to listen to everything he says and nod our heads yes, because he's federal, and we need someone other than the station to take responsibility for all this shit if it goes sideways. Coffee good this morning, Jim? Yeah, fuck off. Special Agent Peterson just walked in? Yeah, yeah, uh, we're ready for him. Agent Peterson? Gentlemen? Yeah, yeah, come on in, Agent Peterson. Uh, hi, I'm I'm Jim Hilliard. This is Fred Heckman. Sir? Good to meet you. Look, I'm not going to waste time with the usual pleasantries, okay? How much time we got before we're on air? We go live at noon. Okay. Well, look, I've been watching the footage since last night. Hell of a man you've got here, huh? Yeah, we noticed. So, look, if it's all right with you, I'd like to be on call for today. Well, it's all right with me, Agent Peterson. Right, right, just call me Roy. It's all we've got time for. Uh, okay, uh... Roy, I'm just worried if Fed is going to make Tony jumpy. Well, don't worry about that. I'll stay quiet. He won't know I'm there. Now, I'm going to do some light speed coaching based off my initial profile here. All right? Uh, We were just talking about that. Uh, What is it you do exactly? Uh, The short of it is that I analyze criminals and make identifying assessments to their future actions and means of operations. Whoa. Behold the omnipotent powers of the FBI. Uh, no, not omnipotent yet, but we'll get there. Forensic profiling is a brand new science, but it's picking up steam in the Bureau. The shorter short of it is, is that I specialize in men like Tony Karitzis. Okay, what can you tell us about him? I can tell you that he's manic depressive, and that's precisely what makes him dangerous. Oh, well, I wouldn't call him depressed. He's, he's, he's just angry. Manic depression doesn't manifest in the same way as normal depression. It produces a reaction to the depression. Look, have you all heard the 911 call he made yesterday morning? No. Okay, well, I recorded it off my phone here. Listen to this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I understand. But you say you've got something wired up, a shotgun? I've got a real deal. 12-gauge shotgun wired up to the back of his head, and anything happens to me, it goes off. And if he moves, it goes off. And I got it so there's a hundred ways it goes off, and only one way it don't. And that's keeping me alive and good. You understand? I understand. And they say no crank call. Yes, sir, this is not a crap. I don't call. ever have much for anyone to take. And these motherfuckers find some way to take it all, and I'm mad as hell. I swear to God, he's almost as good as dead. He's never been closer to dead than he is right now. You see? Tony has made a connection between his life and his goals, which serves as the basis for his depression. But his operations revolve around a skewed sense of justice. So he's crazy. No, he isn't crazy. Tony is very much in control and very sane. Manic depressives are not inherently violent people. There are thousands all over the country, and they get by just fine like you and me. Like them, Tony understands the concepts of right and wrong, but he's acting out in retaliation to trauma experienced as a child. Yeah, well, we were told that he hated talking about his father. So the difference between Tony and, say, a mass murderer is that he operates and relies on the empathy of others. Someone experiencing a psychological break or someone who was a full-fledged psychopath wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, so then he'll let Dick Hall go. No, I'm not saying that he will. I'm saying that he could. The potential is there. But he could kill him. <sighs> Roy, we're numbers guys here. What are the odds? 50-50? Hmm. 80-20. 80 in favor of Dick's release? Jim, I wouldn't be here if it was 80 in favor. Fred, your phone's ringing. Slick Leonard called. Oh, did they win? They're playing tonight. He was wondering if we'd be calling back. Sally, nobody wants to hear about how the Pacers are going to get the shit kicked out of them again. So, what should I tell them? Better luck next season. Oh, shit, it's locked. You are shitting me. When did you start locking your office? I don't know. I thought I'd try something new. Come on. Fred, come on. You got the key? Hold on, hold on. on. I got it. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, All right, Roy. What am I doing? Okay. Look, right now, do everything you can to humanize Dick Hall. Okay? Say his name often. Anything you can do to make Tony feel like he's having a conversation about people instead of a negotiation about what he wants. Okay? Fred Heckman speaking. Fred, it's Tony Christus. Yes, sir. Good morning, Tony. I thought you'd get into work at 7. 
Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been here. We've been in meetings all morning. We're, we're getting ready for the, uh, uh, the, uh, for the big interview today. Good. That's what I wanted to know. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're good to go. How's Dick doing, Tony? Well, he's still kicking. How's your wife? Uh, she, she's doing fine. She mad at you for missing your anniversary? She's a good woman, Tony. She understands the situation. Yeah, yeah, I'm... I'm sorry about that. They they brought my brother Stephen up here last night and I was talking to him. What'd you talk about with your brother? Well, he just doesn't get it, Fred. He's just... I know he cares about me and all, but that just makes it worse. When the people who love you don't understand you, I, I can't think of anything worse. Yeah, I know what you mean, Tony. And I don't have a wife. I never had a wife. I, I barely ever gone steady. And I don't have any shame in telling you that I'm a virgin. I could have had someone in the army, but I didn't want bumps all over my balls. I, I've never been with a woman, but I, I haven't given it much thought to it either. That's what my daddy done to me. He drilled all the romance right out of my head, all the romance and the happiness. I got plumb nothing but work ethic left. But by God, do I work hard. I work my ass off. Well, I know you do, Tony. Yeah, I've got friends, but I tell you what. I tell you what, nobody talks to me like you do, Fred. You know what I get from you? I get respect. I don't get any kind of pity. I just get respect and the kind of respect I earned, man. I do respect you, Tony. You know, I think you're on track to being my best friend. And when all this is over, we're going out. We're going out and we're going to go for a night out on the town. I'll pay for it because I'm getting five million dollars. And you bring your wife too, so I can tell her how sorry I am. And I'll buy her a big old ring to make up for the anniversary you missed because I don't want her to be mad at you. And I know nothing makes up for lost time. Well, that sounds great, Tony. I want to talk about the interview. I got some questions I want you to ask me. You got a pen and paper? Uh, pen and paper? To write them down, because there's no way you're going to remember all of them. Yeah, uh, uh, I can get a pen and paper. All right, question one. Uh, just uh, give me a second there, uh, Tony. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. Go ahead, Tony. Question one. What would possess a man to tie a shotgun to the back of a son of a bitch's head? Uh, what would possess a man to tie a shotgun to the back of another man's head? I said, son of a bitch, Fred. Son of a bitch. Right, well, I can't say that on the radio, Tony. You, you, you know, we gotta think about the, the optics here a bit. You, you want people to understand you, to, to understand where you're coming from? That's right, well, that's right. Well, you're gonna right. have to remember that Dick is a human being. Well, I haven't seen no goddamn evidence of that. Now, Tony, a lot of people in town know Dick Hall. They've worked with him, they've gone to church with him. Well, then, they know firsthand how he's a rotten from the inside out. I'm just not sure everybody feels that way about Dick. Now, this is a man with a wife and kids, Tony. Question two. Did you hear me? Question number two. Did you hear me, Tony? It's a man with a wife and kids. Yeah, my fucking ears work, Fred. You don't ever have to patronize me. Well, I didn't mean to... Question two. Okay, question two. How long can any normal man withstand being bludgeoned by the greedy, tyrannical banking system currently in place? Okay. Did you get that? Yeah, I got it, Tony. Now, I got one last question, and, and, and you come up with all the other ones. I know I can be a talker, and I'm going to do a lot of talking, but I need these three questions asked. It's important because these three questions spell it all out. Okay, Tony. All right, question three. I'm ready, Tony. Do you regret having killed Dick? Tony. You get that one down, Fred? Tony, did you kill Dick? You got that down, didn't you, Fred? Don't, I, I, I need you to answer me now, Tony. Is Dick alive? Yeah, he's alive. Tony. Now, you, you, now you know there's a, there's a condition here. You know we can't do this interview if you kill him. Uh-huh. You told me that you wouldn't hurt him. He's fine right now. Do you want to talk to him? You need to you want to talk to him? Dick, say good morning, Fred. Tony? I'm here, Fred. Say good morning. Good morning, Fred. You hear him? He's fine. Tony? Now I'm I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to get you what you need. Now now I'm 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 not a lawyer. I'm not your lawyer. But I think we all need to negotiate. And you need to keep Dick alive. You understand? No, don't make any demands, Fred. Who the fuck was that? That was, uh, that was Jim, my producer. 
He just wants me to be real careful about this. That wasn't no fucking Jim. I know what Jim sounds like because you said that was Jim yesterday, and that wasn't the same goddamn voice. Tony, it was Jim. I don't know what to tell you. It's Jim. You, you put him on the phone right fuck now. <sighs> Jim, he wants to speak with you. Uh, this is Jim. Jim, what are you doing listening in on my private conversation with Fred? Uh, we, we just want to help with whatever we can, Mr. Curisus. Don't you fucking Mr. Curisus me. You tell me right now. Are you associated with the law enforcement? No, I am not associated with law enforcement. I work down here at the station. Who comes on after Fred? I'm sorry? In the morning, goddammit. Who comes on after Fred shows over? Who comes on after Fred? Don't repeat what I fucking said, what? you big piece of shit motherfucker! Put Fred on the phone right now! Oh, okay, okay. Fred, Fred, who wants to speak? What about now? Tony, 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 it's Fred. What the fuck, what the fuck are you trying to pull on me, Fred? T Tony, I, I, I don't understand. Your goddamn producer doesn't know who works on your fucking radio station. Tony, How do you explain the connection's that? not great over here. He probably couldn't hear you too well. Don't give me that shit, Fred. You don't give me that shit. You're the man I trust. You're the man I respect. You're my friend. Tony, Tony I am your friend. I'm your friend, and I want to be your best friend. But if we're going, if we're, if if we're gonna be like that, you've got to trust me. You have to trust me, okay? I, I I don't know how to explain what happened just now, but that was my producer Jim, and he's just in here listening because he has to know what to expect for our interview later today. Now, do you trust me? Things like that can't be happening, Fred. Listen, Tony, I know, okay? I want to be your best friend too. That's good. Good. Now, my lawyer just got here, and we're working on my immunity deal, and my deal for five million dollars. So, I gotta get off the phone and get my money. But I'll talk to you in a few hours, man, and we'll do that interview. <sighs> okay, Tony. All right. And if you got those questions. You can't kill Dick, Tony. If you kill Dick, we won't do the interview. All right. I'll talk to you in a few hours, man. You take care of yourself, Tony. So, what do you think, Roy? Hmm. 90-10. Next time on American Hostage. Tony thinks we're friends. You're gonna tell him we'll give him something if he gives us something. Maybe you can trade us something. What does that mean, Fred? We're not keeping him on the air if he shoots dick. He might set off the whole building. I'm getting sick of everyone saying what we can't do without telling me what I should do. Hello, what? Fred. Well, as you can already tell, we are currently on the line with Mr. Karitsis. America wants to talk to the crazy man. Who could have seen that coming? If we don't open the lines, does he shoot him? Yes. The next episode will be out in a week. Or you can binge all eight episodes right now on Amazon Music. Or you can listen ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. American Hostage is an Amazon original and criminal content production. Written by C.D. Carpenter. Directed by Sean Christensen. Produced by Adam Volerich and Brendan Hubbard. Executive produced by John Hamm, Sean Christensen, and Gabriel Mason, starring John Hamm, Carla Gugino, Joe Perino, Dylan Baker, and Becky Ann Baker, with additional performances by James O'Connor, Ryan Willard, Sean Christensen, Michael Dreyer, sound design by Brandon Jones, composed by Darren Morsey, editing by Thomas Beach, Sean Christensen, and Adam Volerich, recording and engineering by Dave Williams, Mixing, mastering, and additional editing by Nick Masidi. ID reads by Natalie Prass. For Amazon Music, executive producers are Morgan Jones and Dave Easton. Senior producer is Eliza Mills. Special thanks to Jacob Bronstein, Phil Sanchez, Chris Davis, Jack Parker, Marcelino Villalpando, Stephanie Walkneen, Vlad Norman, Vanessa Rebert, Sam Petherbridge, Kale Bittner, Alice Zoe, Trevor McNeil, Ty Jacobson, Rich Sherman, Marshall Louie, WIBC, Wish TV, and Creative Artists Agency. <laughs>